Hey guys, so today we'll be looking at the normal distribution and we're just going to go through and have a look at the properties of the normal before we start looking at any of the specifics. So I guess the first kind of important property of the normal distribution is that it's for a continuous random variable. So what this means is that the values of x which we observe, so we have x along this axis here, this red axis, and they go negative this way and positive this way. So because x is a continuous random variable, it can assume any value between negative infinity, which is our negative numbers this way, and positive infinity positive infinity which are our positive numbers this way and it can take on any value so it can take on negative 1 million or positive 900,002 so that's one of our first properties also we'll notice that we have uh, a very symmetrical looking normal distribution here so this line down the middle actually breaks up the normal into two sections and each of these sections is the same so if I were to fold one half onto the other they'd be the same. So this is the property of symmetry. So the normal distribution when it's normal is symmetrical on both sides. So what that means is this half here which I'll shade as green is going to be exactly the same as this half here, which is this other green part. So we've got this property of symmetry. And because we've got this property of symmetry, that means that in this half up here, we have all positive numbers and we have 50% of our data. So that's this half here, above the red line. And in this half here, below the red line, we have negative numbers, and we have the other 50% of our data. So that means that, if we think about this logically, we have this middle point here, which is exactly between negative infinity and positive infinity which is 0. So half of our numbers, if we can take on any number between negative infinity and positive infinity, then half of them will be between 0 and infinity, so we've got 50% this side, and the other half will between, be between 0 and negative infinity, so we'll have 50% on this side. This also allows us to work out some quite basic probabilities. So I'll write these here in this nice purple. So we've got numbers which are greater than zero and less than infinity. Uh, there'll be 50% of them from zero to infinity. So what we can write is the probability that x, and remember this PR brackets x just means the probability of x, the probability that x is greater than 0 will be equal to 0.5. And this 0.5 is just equal to this 50% on our here, divided by 100% to convert it back into a decimal, so we get this 0.5 value, because that cancels, and that cancels, and that cancels, so we're left with just 1 on 2, which is equal to 0.5. Also, the probability that x is less than 0, so x is this way, is equal to 0.5 and that's the exact same rationale so if 
50% of the numbers are this way, so 50% of our data lies to the left or below zero, then the probability that we choose a number less than zero is going to be equal to 50%. And if we convert that back into a probability, so we do 50% divided by 100%, we just get 0.5. Lovely. So then this gives rise to our, our next observation. So if we know that we can observe any possible number ever, so between negative infinity and positive infinity, if we were to pick any number, so if we were to pick just any number, uh, so we were to say our x is equal to this capital X, so if we just pick any number and we get this probability of x, if we're allowed to pick any number and x can be any number, then the probability that we'll pick x will be 100%. So what this says is that the area under the normal distribution is 100%. So if we let x be any value, then the area under our normal distribution is going to be 100% and it's also going to be 1%. 100% divided by 100%. So this will give us a probability of 1. So the area under this curve, the total area, which I'll shade up in purple, yep, this area here is equal to 100%. So we've got Lovely. Then our next important property is our measures of central tendency. So if we remember our measures of central tendency were our mean, median and mode. So our mean, which we often write as this x bar, our median and our mode. So for our normal we have our mean, our median, and mode all occur in the same spot, and they all occur at this center point here. So you have your mean is here, your median is here, and your mode is also here. So there are reasons why this occurs, but for our purposes we just need to know that they're there. Lovely. So these are our properties of the normal distribution. We've got it's a continuous random variable, can take on any value between negative infinity and positive infinity. It's symmetrical, so 50% of the data is above this zero, which is equal to our mean, it's also equal to our median, and it's also equal to our mode. So 50% of our observations are above our mean, 50% of observations are below our mean, and we've worked that out here. And we know that if we, del if we pick any observation of x, so the value under this curve, the area under this curve, is going to be 100%. So if x can be any value, then this value under the curve is 100%. And we also know that for our measures of central tendency, our mean, median, and mode, they all occur at this middle red axis of 0, where we have our mean equal to zero, our median equal to zero, and our mode equal to zero. So that is a brief, sum of brief summary of our standardized normal distribution. And we'll have a look at that in more detail in future lectures. Thanks, guys.